farther with each retelling and with baseball back in Detroit. No home run sparks more memories than the story of Reggie Jackson and the light tower. Detroit again becomes the scene as the American League hosts the National League in the 1971 All-Star Game. Well, I just uh, signed in a 70 draft with uh, Pittsburgh, and I was in my uh, first year of uh, A-ball. I was an 11th grader then, and I remember the home run. I always remember the, 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 the flamboyant type of players. He brought this aura about him, you know, uh, when he walked to the plate. Reggie Jackson, batting 272 for Oakland, 17 homers, 41 runs batted in. Reggie Jackson, I think, had a home run in the second inning off uh, Doc Ellis that hit uh, the uh, right field uh, light tower and bounced back on the field. It might have been the longest home run that I've ever seen in my life. It was like somebody, you know, hit one of those titanium drivers or something. There have been some balls hit over the roof in, in Tiger Stadium in right field, and uh, that one was off the light tower. The thing about it, it was still rising when, uh, when it struck that light tower. Never forget the shot, because I had become friends with Doc Ellis. And uh, when Reggie took him up on the transform, it was uh, something that I would never forget. Seeing how high and, and how far that was, it was pretty impressive. And I have uh, seen balls hit close to that, but not quite up there in the light tower like that. And I remember the home run, seeing it and hearing the, call, the, the shot, uh, hearing how it was called. There's a long drive. That one is going way up. It is off the roof. I just remember the ball hitting the bat so square and so solid, and the ball just jumping off my bat and going in this real high trajectory. I couldn't really believe how high it went. And then, of course, Reggie could stand there and watch it, which Reggie did as well as anybody. I just kind of threw the bat down and started walking towards first base. And I remembered, oh, I better start running. You know, it might turn into like a showboating thing. He felt so proud, and he just um, threw his chest out and was running around the bases like, uh, there's nobody quite like him. He, uh, he felt like Superman. Lynn Swington drives deep into left field. Look at this one go, everybody. Up to the scoreboard. It's over the scoreboard, bouncing up onto the freeway. It's a long drive. That ball may have hit the lights up there. I think it did. I can't believe it. Forget about it. Wow. I think it's what it does. It, it uplifts uh, the individual that hit it and, and above all the team. Then when you're actually uh, able to see it and understand a little bit more the magnitude of what a uh, home run like that signifies, uh, you appreciate it a little bit more. When you see one of those monsters one, once in a while, you say, whoa, man, that's a long way. He's hitting it pretty far. McGuire, the ball that he hit was just, uh, he hits him out of sight. McGuire was the most consistent uh, mileage on home runs that you've ever seen. He was incredible. That year in 98, and even 99, it, I mean, the first part of the, the field, you know, was not even, didn't even count. You know, he, he just hit balls in the upper decks. You can watch the outfield a lot of times when he hit the ball, they never moved because, I mean, there's no, no sense of moving <laughs> when the ball is going 500 feet. I've seen uh, Mark McGuire hit one uh, at Yankee Stadium up in the black. Looking up, and this game is tied. Gone. Mark McGuire's home run in, uh, in Cleveland at Jacob Field. He hit it off the uh, Budweiser sign there in left center field. And out. Off the scoreboard. In St. Louis. Billy Wagner was pitching to close out the game, and Mark McGuire hit a, a ball out down the left field line that I thought, it, for a second, I thought it was going to leave the stadium. There it goes! He did it! But I managed Stargell. Stargell can hit him as far as any man alive. I've seen some of the stars around on different um, stadiums where he would hit. Um, in Philadelphia, I saw a star way up on the top deck. Well, Stardew hit one in Montreal that had to go every bit of 700 feet. It just brought a silence over the whole ballpark. The longest one I've seen on TV was the one Andres Galarraga hit in Florida against Kevin Brown. Um, 
was like six, eight, somewhere else from the top of the stadium. And the Colorado Rockies on a Galarraga slam sail into the lead here in Miami. One that comes that jumps out at me right away is obviously Jose Canseco uh, when he uh, hit one in, in Toronto. That was something that was talked about and still talked about. The whole stadium was silent and realized, you know, how far this ball was hit. Uh, they actually had a picture behind the fan that caught the ball looking down onto the field, and we looked about two inches tall. With the bat speed and uh, the arms that these guys are facing, you know, uh, it's an average of 94, 95 miles an hour from everybody that comes to that mound. It's incredible. You may have noticed that when Andre Dawson and Dave Parker were talking about that Willie Stargell home run at the Big O in Montreal, you saw no video. That game was not televised, so there are apparently no pictures of that home run, simply adding to the lore of that homer as the Hawk and the Cobra tell that story throughout the years. And next, not only the legendary home runs, but the stories that grow up around them. I'll be talking with a man who hit his fair share of long gone home runs. Not Jose, but another slugger joins us right after this. You won the toss, Mickey. You're the home team. Uh, Willie, you're the visiting ball club, so let's play ball. Good luck. Good luck, Mickey. High fly ball to the left field. This may go all the way. It's way back, way back, and it is gone over the left field wall at the 345-foot mark. It's now 4 to nothing with Mays out in front. Willie now has two in a row. High fly ball deep in the left center field. This one may go. It's going, going. It is gone over the left center field wall. That's one of the tape measure variety. High fly ball deep to left field. This may be it. It's way back there, and it is gone. And Mickey Mantle wins it, 9-8. Well, that's it. The game is over, and we'll meet our contestants and present the checks in just one minute. The original home run derby that was filmed at Wrigley Field in Los Angeles back in 1959. The romance and the attraction of the home run. We say good evening to Greg Luzinski. During his 15-year Major League career, he hit 307 home runs, principally for the Phillies team that won four division titles in five years, also the 1980 World Series. And David Nemec is a baseball historian, and among his many publications, the ultimate baseball book. And it's great to have you both with us on Home Run Derby evening. Uh, Greg, everyone's got a story. Where were you when Reggie hit the light tower? What's your recollection of that night? You know, uh, I don't even remember where I was, but uh, I knew it went a long way in, uh, there in Detroit. Uh, and uh, it was a good hitter's ballpark to, to right field. But, uh, you know, the, the height of the ball was, uh, was something that uh, amazes me. Longest home run you ever saw hit in person, Greg? Well, Dave Kingman used to hit him long and high, and uh, you know I I seen him hit one in Wrigley Field, and uh, you know down down the street, and I, I don't know how far it went, but uh, he didn't move for it and left. I know that. <laughs> Just watch it like a work of art. He's playing turn in the around, outfield. Turn around and watch. Absolutely, save a little a little breath, David. At, at what point in in baseball history did you know we, we've had historical home runs the the shot that Ruth uh, called during the series but when did distance really enter the equation of the lore of the game I think really when Mickey Mantle came into the picture uh, you know almost from the outset uh, he was hitting just you know moonshots and in, in the in the ballpark in the you know sections of ballparks that uh, very few major leaguers previously had reached I remember he hit, you know one home run in Washington that just at the time it was hit seemed beyond belief. I remember I didn't see it in person or on TV, but I did, the following day in the paper they uh, showed the trajectory of it and it was, you know, it, it just looked impos humanly impossible. Now we hear numbers, David, ascribed to home runs. I think that Mandel shot was well over 550 feet. The original tape measure home run that Red Patterson measured. Uh, someone once used geometry to extrapolate that the one that he almost put all the way out of Yankee Stadium would have gone 700 plus. How accurate are these numbers? He, he, they're, I think they're, they're, they're pure guesses. The longest home run I ever saw hit was in Cleveland, the old Cleveland Stadium uh, by Luke Easter in 1952. And went up in the, in the nethermost corner of the right field upper deck. Uh, and, as, you know, I heard people talking like seven or 800 feet then, but 
I, it, it, you know, I think it's impossible to hit a baseball that far, or anywhere even close to it. But who knows? I mean, you know, some of these shots, uh, even today, if they, you know, were really ac were accurately measured, could well be over 600 feet. Greg, Greg guys in the in clubhouse, guys in the dugout, what impresses guys on the inside of the game about a power shot? Well, I, I you know, I, I think as a player, you get a, you know, you get a big kick out of it. There's no question about it. And. Uh, you know, the most amazing part about it as a hitter is you just touch the ball off. I mean, I guess it's obviously leg strength, your hips, and the you know, strength of your arms and the speed of your bat going to the ball. And uh, uh, there's no question the guys in the dugout get excited because, uh, I mean, you can hear them as soon as, you you know, you hit it. Uh, they're letting go in there, and uh, uh, they know it's uh, a long way. You played with the Schmitty. Uh there was an anticipation when a guy like you, a guy like Schmitty, stepped in. Could you feel that in the ballpark when people would lean forward? <laughs> well, you know, we hit back-to-back uh, -back and, uh, you know, hit a, hit a bunch of back-to-back -back home runs. But uh, we were a little bit different in the type of home run we hit. Uh, you know, mine were more of a line drive and take off where uh, Schmitty hit some long, high towering shots. You know, David, Barry Bonds, we're still waiting for him to make his debut this season. It almost <laughs> seems like there's this latent tension missing from this part of the baseball season because we haven't we haven't life would stop when he steps into the into the batter's box exactly if you uh, watch the game from McCovey Cove in, in the uh, previous years uh, after the new ballpark opened uh, you'd be amazed at the extraordinary difference this year where, where you may find one or two people hanging out in the cove now uh, whereas previously it was the, the, the best seat in the house as far as as far as getting that home run ball you know in 2005 Gray, when we talk home runs we talk distance inevitably you're going to come back at one point to the subject of steroids and that's not the central point of this discussion but how much does that topic just color an appreciation of what could what we've seen say in the last 15 years well there's no there's no question it tarnishes it uh, it's it's obvious by uh, the comments and uh, how, how, how uh, ex players uh, feel about it but uh, you know it's there uh, you know, we have to go on from there and move on from there, and what happens, happens. But, uh, you know, one of the things is that, uh, you know, these ballparks are, are so much smaller now than compared to when the mantles and the mazes and even, and even in the air I played. I mean, uh, you look at the Citizens Bank Park here compared to Veterans Stadium, which was supposed to be a good hitter's park. Uh, this has uh, really turned out to be what you might call a band box, and uh, um, a lot of my long fly balls or outs would be home runs in this ballpark. So, you know, the, the ballpark has definitely played a, a, a big difference in, in the number of home runs. You know, uh, Greg, I asked you about Reggie Shot. I asked you about the longest thing you saw in person. I, I'd be remiss with a 300 home run hitter, the longest one you ever poked. Well, I, I had the longest one in Pittsburgh over the, uh, over the scoreboard off uh, Donnie Robinson, uh, and uh, I know I hit three balls over the roof in Old Kaminsky Park, uh, uh, yellow seats in Houston, and, uh, uh, you know, just the Liberty Bell here in Veterans Stadium, and all those ballparks are gone right now. Do you ever get uh, a number from anybody the longest in terms of feet? No, not really. I, you know, it's like they say they try to project things, and uh, you know, it's really hard to do that. Uh, you, you just don't know where it's going to land, or it hits a light standard, or, or something of that nature. But uh, uh, you know, I, you know, you can hit them over the roof at Old Comiskey, <laughs> and, and that was a tough ballpark for home runs. You know, that was quite quite long shots. I, I'm guessing as the years go by, those home runs get just a tad longer in the retelling, but that's part of the lore of the game, isn't well, it? Well, normally that's how you tell the story. <laughs> just like a good fishing <laughs> tale. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much. Greg Lazinski, David Nemec, I appreciate you taking the time this evening. Thank you. And on ESPN.com, search OTL Nightly to send us email or to sign up for a daily program alert.